Thank her very much for taking her time to share information about smoking cessation resources, which is in our collaborative, one of our collaborative components. Um, and Patricia has done smoking cessation for five to seven years. Well, actually, the first the first time I did smoking cessation was with teens uh, about eleven years ago through the Nada program, not on tobacco. Yes. Okay. And then we may want to go around and introduce our um, participants online. Yes, so if, you, if you've uh, either called in or signed in, if you would please um, shout out your name and where you're calling in from, that would be great. So we can make sure you get uh, CME credit for listening in on today's session. Denise Abreu from Las Vegas uh, El Centro Family Health. Hello? Hello? Are you out? Hello? Hi. Hello. Who else is on besides uh, Denise from El Centro? Anna Chavez. And Anna, where do you hail from? I'm from El Centro. I do the for the nor northern area. Are Centro. you also then Las Vegas? Yes, yes. And who else do we have participating um, today? Jenna said she might join us. Oh, Jenna Shipwright, the health educator? Yes. Wonderful. Where is she from? Also from Las Vegas, El Centro, from the Hill. And do we have um, others participating? Did I understand that AQ Health Partners might be online? This is Kevin Worling, uh, Systems Analyst on the Code. Well, to join, uh, just so you know, to mute your line, it's star pound, and same to unmute your line. And um, feel free to do that. I also am able to do that for you, and it'll announce. Just so you know, uh, I may, if there's a lot of noise going on. Uh, why don't we go ahead and we'll go ahead and start get and started. Jump in as folks, we'll see who, who joins in maybe at the end, too. Okay, so you know, this is Patricia Torn again, and um, I have nothing to disclose. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're just going to put on this slide on for just a second here. And this is in case you have any uh, consultations you'd like to bring um, a patient to the uh, submit a patient form um, that's on our website. Contact Clancy Tarbox, and there's her email right there, C Tarbox. And uh, you can be uh, reimbursed by Molina if your patient is a Molina patient. Um, and I believe it's $150, uh, and there's no limit as far as how many times you can bring your patient to clinics. So, uh, take advantage of that. Um, get in touch with us, and and we'll help you through the process. And I think you've already done that, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like I'm up here now. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you a little bit extra background, beside the smoking cessation I've done, um, 12 years ago I began working with the American Cancer Society as their community organizer for New Mexicans concerned about tobacco. And one of my roles was to go out and get the word out about why secondhand exposure, secondhand smoke exposure to babies and children was, was so detrimental to their health, as well as to inc maybe uh, increase in the, uh, the enhancement of them smoking later in life. And so um, I really became passionate about the need for that to happen. And I grew up in a time, I'm 72 years old, and I grew up in a time when smoking around your children was completely acceptable. There was heavy smoking at that time. Almost everyone in my family smoked, except in my family, but my uh, cousins, my aunts, my uncles were all smokers. And um, lots of secondhand exposure to smoke. So I was really pretty passionate about it. I had 
uh, just lost a niece at the age of 54 uh, to cancer from smoking and she had smoked around her children and so I became very p passionate about what smoking can do in people's lives as far as the health is, of their children is concerned and their own. So here are some questions that I'd like for you to consider. And I understand that you may have already had some of the secondhand smoke exposure for children. And I'm just going to very briefly talk about it because it really is why we're doing this as far as this organization and this group of people are concerned. Because you do work so closely with children uh, in a medical setting. So what are some of the important reasons to eliminate children's exposure to secondhand smoke? And in your practice, do you have readily available referral resources for community-based adult and teen tobacco cessation support services that are evidence-based? And how might you improve the chances that the adult or teen will follow through with any referral you give to them? And that's the question. I can't tell you how many times my doctor has referred me to certain programs for, for losing weight, and sometimes I followed through and sometimes I haven't. So um, how, do you get, how, how do you help enhance the motivation for them to follow through? Um, so let's take a look. What are some of the important reasons to eliminate children's exposure to secondhand smoke, smoke pre-birth and post-birth? Um, some of those reasons are, and have been proven, that secondhand smoke causes premature death and disease in non-smokers, children and adults. Children have a greater risk of premature birth and lower birth weight if their mother smokes during pregnancy. There is increased risk of sudden infant death syndrome, acute respiratory infections, ear problems, and their asthma baby may be more severe, and I think that's of particular interest to you here. And then respiratory symptoms that they may have um, are some of the reasons because of smoking, secondhand smoke, and slowed lung growth if the parents smoke. And they may miss more days of school due to illness. Also, they're more likely to use tobacco if parents are tobacco users. However, I would like to share with you, I have done smoking cessation now with adults for the past six years and um, I'm doing it in both group settings and one-on-one -on -one settings and more and more I hear from from parents and grandparents who say to me my children and so there's been a lot of education with children about smoking and the and the and the, and the bad effects of smoking on their moms and dads and on them and on their grandma and grandpa and what we're hearing from people who come into these smoking cessation settings is that one of the reasons they're there is because their grandchild or their child has said, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, would you please stop smoking? I don't want you to die. So things have changed with the way children look at what their, what their parents are doing. So it may not be quite as much of a, of a problem anymore with children modeling after, after their parents and their grandparents as it once was in the past because of all the education that has now gone on. There are um, several programs that are offered by the American Lung Association in New Mexico, smoking cessation programs and New Mexico Quit Now cessation services. And I'm going to go over some of these, and I've been involved with every one of them in one way or another. The American Lung Association in New Mexico offers um, Freedom from Smoking, which is a group support for adults. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Freedom from Smoking One-on-One, -on -one, Self-Guided Tobacco Cessation for Adults. That's brand new. It's only been around for about, oh, about the last 12, 14 months. And then not, not on tobacco for teens. And by the way, there is a curriculum for that that's specific to Native Americans as well. Um, and I've done that in the past. It's changed tremendously from when I first taught it. Um, it, there, there's much more use of texting and text messages with teens now who are in that program than when I first did it 11 years ago. Um, and each of these can be either used alone or they can be combined with the New Mexico Quit Now Cessation Services at 1-800-QUIT-NOW and there's a brand new web-based quitnownewmexico.com that people, people can participate in um, and the New Mexico Quit Now Cessation Services can stand alone as well. 
Just a reminder that those services are available for teens as well as adults. The big difference between the teens and the adults is they are, teens are not offered, they are not offered any kind of over-the-counter medi medication to assist them in making a quit attempt. If they want to do that, they need to ask their doctor specifically uh, for uh, approval on that. Um, they cannot buy it at the store, uh, over-the-counter. Um, they will, when you check out with any of that, I purchased it, and even at my age, I'm asked for my, my driver's license to make sure that I'm over, over the age that, uh, the, that people are allowed to buy. Um, things like the lozenges and the gum and the patches. So this slide, I will tell you that when I first became familiar with um, with the 1-800-QUIT number now number, um, I had a lot of complaints from people about it and very recently it has become a much better animal to use and to refer people to. Thank goodness. Um, New Mexico has a wonderful whole cadre of things that you can choose from uh, for a smoking cessation with that, and it's all free. And uh, people, it's, there's a phone-based, a web-based, and you can integrate that combining the phone and the web-based um, programs. You can do both if you wish. Plus, there's a new text message support that's primarily, the text messages are based on what that person's needs are. And they have these messages texted to them to keep them motivated and to help keep them motivated to keep going with this. Um, they can enroll um, on the phone-based one at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And they get up to five coaching calls. This is brand new. It says here four weeks of nicotine replacement therapy after the second call and it's either the gum patch or lozenges they have now increased that to eight weeks of free uh, and if someone has a chronic disease and that could be someone with asthma they can get up to 12 weeks of cessation um, over-the-counter medications so that's a big big change and a big leap and I think it's something to keep in mind important when you refer uh, adults especially uh, to this, to these smoking cessation programs, and as I said, the youth are not are not given smoking cessation um, or nicotine replacement therapy over the over the this particular um, medium. They get local they get um, educational materials, local cessation resources. An integrated web coach is optional, um, so that they can combine it with the web. They get optional text messages. Spanish-speaking quick coaches are available. It's very important to know that in New Mexico. And access to a language line with 200 different languages. And um, there are four essential practices that um, are incorporated into this program. And they are as follows. They are quit at your own pace. Conquer your urges to smoke. Use medications so they really work. And don't just quit, become a non-smoker, and think in your own terms of yourself as being a non-smoker. And on the web-based, um, you can enroll through quitnownewmexico.com, and it has complete cessation services, including, again, up to eight weeks of nicotine replacement therapy for those without chronic diseases and up to 12 weeks for those with chronic diseases, local re cessation resources, educational materials, text message support, and Spanish version is available for the web as well. And then, there, and then again, they use the four essential practices. They use a community forum where people can chat with each other and with their coach. They can, uh, with their coach as well, there's a coach function. And there are trackers on how they're doing with the, their smoking plan and their quit plan. And uh, we've already mentioned the text message support. So I'd like to speak with you just a little bit about uh, freedom from smoking as far as a group is concerned. Um, this has been around for over 30 years and is considered the gold standard in smoking cessation programs and is continuously being updated. 
Um, it started in a, uh, with research, uh, five years of research in 1975. Um, with several organizations being involved and teams of physicians and psychologists and health educators and it was tested in 10 U.S. cities um, and with a year-long follow-up and um, 30 years later it is still as far as group support is concerned uh, considered the gold standard. It's appropriate, it's medical, medically sound, it's ethical, it's cost-effective and it's replicable in all types of communities. And this can be done, and I've been doing this for six years now, it can be done in eight one to two hour weekly sessions. It can be done at lunchtime, or um, if you're done, doing it um, in a private setting, it can be done in two hour weekly sessions. And um, it's empowering, and it's experiential, and it's confidential peer support group. And it's that peer support that is so important to this along with the information they get and all the um, educational behavioral change principles that are involved. That peer support gives people the, the hope that it's not just them that's having this problem, that they're not peculiar or there's something wrong or abnormal about them that they've made so many quit attempts and most of them have when they come to a group. Some of them up to 20 or 25 att attempts before they finally quit. And um, it's common for people to, for it to take seven quit attempts. And so people go, what's the matter with me? I'm weak. I'm, you know, what's the, you know, they beat up on themselves. So this program actually focuses on the positive and it talks about quitting as a process and you learn from each quit attempt and if you relapse or slip not to beat up on yourself just to set another time for when you'll make another quit attempt within the next 12 months and that's encouraged and uh, encourages the use of medication only if someone smokes more than 10 cigarettes a day um, if you smoke fewer than 10 cigarettes a day there is absolutely no evidence that it is helpful to use over-the-counter medication. Um, some people do it as a head kind of thing. Um, some people may chew the gum to help it delay any weight gain. Usually there's a nine pound weight gain, up to nine pounds, uh, when someone quits smoking. And if that's something that's going to send them back to smoking, uh, we sometimes suggest to them that they may want to ch chew some, uh, some gum, which can delay that weight gain until after they're totally off the gum, uh, the gum and then it'll, it'll come back up so they don't become so discouraged with that weight gain. Um, and then they, have, they deal with the weight gain once they've stabilized with their, their quit attempt. Um, and it provides the tools to stay quit after the completion of Freedom from Smoking. And it is available at the American Lung Association in Albuquerque and other locations around the state. You can call 505-265-0732 and ask for Joanna who will be able to tell you where some of those locations are. The training is also available for any place in the state for people to be trained to do this. So if you don't have it in your community and you would like to have somebody trained, um, again give Joanna a call and talk with her about the possibility of that and what the cost might be for that. Since there are three people here from Las Vegas, I'm wondering if you know offhand if there's something. We have trained some people in Las Vegas. I'm not sure that they're still on board um, because there were a lot of layoffs a few years ago. So I'm not sure that the people that I trained in Las Vegas, because I am the master trainer here in New Mexico for that, I'm not sure that they still have folks in Las Vegas who are doing this. Um, so um, I think Joanna would be the best person to check with on that. If, uh, and we might need to do a little research to see if they're still up and running in Las Vegas. Um, here is, what are some of the primary problems with the group? The group requires a lot of time. You saw, eight weeks, two, two hours uh, each week. That's a lot of time. And yet people in our day and age want things to be quick and fast, and they want it now, and they want it simple, and they, and they, they don't want to take a lot of time doing it. The other problem is a lot of people don't want to be in a group. There are people who just don't feel like a group is going to be effective for them. Uh, and it's usually the last thing that people will try is a, as a group um, uh, smoking cessation. So um, in the American Lung Association came out with this wonderful guide about a year and a half ago 
called The Guide to Help You Quit Smoking, Your Own Personal Workbook. And it's based on the whole Freedom from Smoking program, the eight-week program, but it's made and it, it put it together in such a way that people can guide themselves through it and make their own quit attempt. When I saw that, I looked at it and I thought, you know what, it's easy to pick that book up and, and just look at it and say, okay, that's nice, and then put it away. Um, and um, I'm sure it's been very helpful to a lot of people, but I decided to do uh, to create a little 90-minute program, again, based on freedom from smoking, all evidence-based, um, a little 90-minute session, one-on-one -on -one session, using this guide. And, um, and people come in. Um, they, call, um, Albuquerque, they call us, uh, the American Lung Association, and they sit down for 90 minutes with me, and it's all about them. The whole focus is on them. Uh, again, this is a program for adults. And um, we spend a lot of time using motivational interviewing techniques in which they're telling me what's going on within them, what their barriers are, what might their motivators be, what it is they don't like about smoking. And they are telling me those things, writing them down, saying them out loud to me. And when they get through, they take that list with them. Um, and we also um, do a, on a scale of one to five, how ready are you to quit? And the great thing about this is, is that people don't have to be ready to quit right now. They can come in and say, I'm on a, a two on this scale. I really don't think I want to quit. It still, by the end of the session, has helped move them along on that scale to a higher number on their readiness to quit. And if they came in as a four or five, they know now for sure they're ready to quit, they're ready to take that book, they're ready to take the information and use it to their best advantage. I also work very closely with them on um, how addicted are they to nicotine? Do they really need the uh, do they really need the nicotine replacement? If they're smoking fewer than ten cigarettes a day, the answer is probably not. More than likely, it's not going to do anything for them. And uh, so, why even use it? And then, also giving them the information on on the one eight hundred quit now line because they can use that in combination with this self guided book. And then um, we talk about the pros and cons of quitting smoking identifying those barriers and motivators and everything's written down and they take it with them and they can add to it as they go along. We also talk about what is it that makes you, in the past is have you slipped or relapsed? Um, and uh, somebody might say, I started gaining weight. And so we talk a little bit about what kind of strategies could you come up with so that if you start gaining weight, um, and, and you go, oh my gosh, I need to go back to smoking because this weight is coming back on. Um, what are some strategies you can use? And then we talk about what might be appropriate for them. And then I say, this is all in the book, so when you get out, when you leave here, you have this to go back and make your own written plan for all of this. Um, and, of course, we introduce the guide to help you quit smoking. It's I've moved that up. This is an older, older slide, but I've moved that up to, to the very beginning. Um, and um, we do a preview of pack tracks and how to use those. And pack tracks actually can be used in a very beneficial way in which um, not only do you learn what kind of a smoker you are by using those. Uh, I have a son who ha was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. He is a recovering meth addict and he used tobacco and nicotine to get off of, off of meth. And of course, as his mother, I would say, yes, go right ahead, smoke all you want, <laughs> please. Um, but when he came through my class after 22 quit attempts, because he has a very addictive personality, um, he said to me, Mom, he says, you know what you need to add here is to suggest to people, when they're doing their review of their pack tracks and they see a cigarette that they just were doing it just because, they really didn't need it, um, I, at that very minute, decided not to smoke that cigarette, so he started cutting down on the number of cigarettes he was smoking by using pack tracks. And I encourage people who aren't ready to smoke yet, who aren't yet ready to quit smoking yet, to use those pack tracks to cut down. Can you explain what pack tracks are? They're little, um, they're little things that you can slip inside your package of cigarettes or put a, a, a rubber band around them. And um, you can, there are three things that are on it. 
the t you, you keep track of, okay, what time was it when I wanted this cigarette? And then there are three questions. How badly did I want that cigarette? Eh, there's a question mark. And that was, I really didn't want it, I just did it because. Then the next thing is a small yes. Yeah, I needed it, but you know, it was just so-so. And then there's the capital, big capitalized yes, that oh my gosh, I need that cigarette badly. And then next to that are the three moods that you, change, you, you choose from. What kind of mood were you in at the time? Were you in a happy mood? Were you in a kind of a blah, bored mood, and it has little faces that show that? Or were you in a down, sad, depressed, worried kind of mood? And then you mark that. And that helps then, um, then the book gives you the information you need to determine what kind of smoker you basically are. And of course, if you're a sad smoker, those, are the, those folks have a more difficult time in quitting um, because they're using it to lift them up from depression, um, which it does help to some, you know, it has a, has a benefit there. Um, and um, so that basically is for you to determine, but my son said he used it to start cutting back because when he saw those question marks, he immediately quit. So this is something that is not in the freedom from smoking thing, but I quite frankly, I have other, had other people tell me in groups, tell me the same thing that has helped them cut back before their quit day. Um, so we also give them a little kit that they take away with them uh, to help them uh, during the first two weeks and how to use a calendar to reward themselves. And then a biggie for anybody is dealing with the loss of your best friend. Um, and then giving them information that they can give to folks. Um, and uh, by the way, dealing with the loss of your best friend is probably the biggest, m b biggest one as far as people relapsing and going back to smoking. Um, it, it really, and so I talk a lot with people about it because they really long for their best friend and cigarettes have mo for many people become their best friend. Mm -hmm. And unlike when you lose a pet or, or a, a loved one, you can't bring them back into your life. But with cigarettes, all you have to do is walk to the closest store and there they are, right back in your life again. So it's really tough. And then here are some other um, uh, resources for people to use besides that. And that takes about 90 minutes. And I've got to tell you that people walk out of there and they have really moved along that motivational s scale as far as being ready to quit. They take the book with them. They take the, the quit kit with them. And they also um, are then ready to um, uh, use those whenever they're ready to, and they've got the 1-800 uh, line information number about how they can supplement that. So with teens, what you find here are a lot of effects on, on teens on smoking, and some of you deal with teens in your practices. These are some of them. Lowers lung fun function, reduces the rate of lung growth, reduces physical endurance and fitness, increases the resting heart rate, causes increased phlegm and shortness of breath, it de de decrease in the sense of smell and taste, and it may be associated with unhealthy behaviors such as drug and alcohol use. And here are some of the short-term effects. Bad skin, if you're pale and unhealthy, bad breath, bad smelling clothes and hair, reduce athletic performance, reduce physical activity, increased risk of illness, and increased heart heartbeat and blood pressure. So this program of NOT is designed specifically for teens and um, it's to help them reduce their smoking. So just keep that in mind. Some of them quit, some of them reduce their smoking and both are really are really things that you're working towards in, in both sets. Teens usually don't smoke as much as, as adults because they can't afford to um, and they smoke less. But it's much more um, uh, it, it has a greater debilitating kind of effect upon them as far as their brain patterns and setting brain patterns that are there for the rest of their life, even with fewer cigarettes. So it's really important um, health-wise for them to reduce or quit. Um, and it helps them increase healthy lifestyle behaviors. That's talked about. It improves life management skills. Thing, it gives them skills that they can use in other areas of their life throughout life. It's all based on research and evaluation and created specifically for youth. Um, it's comprehensive facilitator training, including ongoing technical assistance, gender sensitive curriculum, and a local evaluation component for tracking. 
So it's for teens who smoke or chew, and in New Mexico, that chew is a really big issue. In some parts of the state, it's even more so than, the, than tobacco. Chew is big, even among girls, which always surprises me. Uh, that there's so many new attractive smokeless tobacco products out there that now the girls can chew uh, or, or use smokeless tobacco without being detected, and it's not the same thing as having to spit. So it's for youth who want a group program and those who volunteer to participate. It's 10 weekly sessions or five sessions um, and is twice a week. And the sessions cannot be back to back and each session is at least 30 minutes. And here are some evaluation results. 80 to 90 percent show a positive change in smoking behavior. 99 percent reported not was important in helping them to quit. And for those participants who cut back cigarette smoked, were reduced by 50% from 12.9 to 6.5 a day. Over a dozen not related publications are available for you and you can always contact Joanna De Maria. She's kind of, I'm giving out her number a lot here, aren't I? <laughs> uh, at 505-265-0732 for information on availability in your community. So She'll be back on Monday. She'll be back on Monday, so be prepared. <laughs> And here are the three top barriers to smoking cessation, along with the fourth one being uh, the loss of your best friend. Being around smokers, seeing them smoke, smelling it, being offered a cigarette, finding cigarettes lying around, alcohol use, especially in the presence of smokers, highly emotional situations, any kind of stress, huge stress, people will relapse or slip. And then, of course, the fourth long term is the factor of grieving the loss of my best friend. So how might you re improve the chances that the adult or teen will follow through with any referral you give? I understand that you um, mostly ask now children whether they're smoking or, and yet you're being encouraged to ask uh, if they're exposed to secondhand smoke. Um, and so there's always the potential of being able to approach uh, their parents, grandparents, or their caregivers, whoever that might be, um, and using what is called maybe um, asking them, uh, letting them know some of the things that are detrimental to children about secondhand smoke. Um, and then being able to work with them on giving them some referrals of places that they might go. The easiest and simplest one is the wait at 1-800 number, uh, but also for the group or any or the one-on-one uh, -on -one or the not if they're teens. Um, and so I would suggest to you, and I've got here using motivational interviewing with them, uh, using some of the same techniques that I have in asking them just to identify um, what it is they like about smoking on one half of the page and on the other page, what it is they don't like about smoking or chewing. And that in itself can lead them and move them in the direction of saying, maybe I should go and investigate and explore one of these possibilities. So here's a little a quick quick slide on using motivational interviewing. Some people go for weeks and weeks of training for motivational interviewing, but there are some really simple tools that you can use in moving and helping people motivate themselves internally to make that quit attempt, and it all has to come from inside. Um, I would highly recommend to you the 5 A's webinar training on brief internet inventions that's provided by the New Mexico Department of Health. Um, this can give you the five A's. Um, uh, it can be very beneficial in moving through a quick way with people, either adults or teens. First of all, just asking them if they smoke. Um, and then the next one would be advising them to quit and then assisting them to quit. And you could actually stop with that third one and refer them to the 1-800 line. It's as quick as that. Um, and this gives you the whole background on the five A's, all clinically proven and tested as being effective in helping people to move along in their readiness to quit by using a brief intervention. I think this could be very, very helpful to you in your clinical practice, and I highly encourage you to take a look at this. So with this, how would you apply this new information to your practice setting? What have you thought about as we've gone along here about how you can apply this? I would like to open up to you that I do provide that training for the one-on-one 90-minute -on -one brief interventions, I mean, intervention, um, and I do that for no charge. 
So if you're interested in that and you've got somebody in your community you think might be a good person to go through that training, let me know and I'll work with you in trying to get them trained to do this, these 90 minute sessions as well. And I've been doing that now. I've done that with several people from Pueblos. Um, I've done it with some people, um, uh, some people in the southern part of the state. So um, just let me know. Uh, and my, my number um, is 505-307-3414. And I can work with you on that. And the only cost of that to you would be the cost of the book. Um, and I do give you a sample uh, quick kit to go with that and some materials. So it would probably be like $25 a person is what it would be. Um, let me know. I'd be glad to work with you on it. And I have your number, so if they forget. Okay. I've referred quite a few people to you. Um, yeah, and yeah, I have someone I talked with this morning who's just, we set up, we're setting up a time right now. And uh, the great thing about this is people can get it right at the time they need it. Uh, they don't have to wait. And the problem is if people wait and they're thinking about it, it's gone. All of a sudden, they forget about it. And if you can meet them at the time, right at the time, with a group, they have to wait until you hold the group. And with the one-on-one, -on -one, that is not the case. Anything else? Excellent. I went a little long. Sorry. Oh, that's, cool. that's okay. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask Patricia? I have two. Okay. One is, um, so as we do different cohorts, they'll be farther from Albuquerque. And this 90-minute one-on-one -on -one intervention that you're talking about, you're the only one that's For now. doing that. Yeah. For right now. Eventually, I'm going to train other people to do this, too. Okay. <laughs> so, it's so effective. I cannot tell you how effective it is. <laughs> so if any of these um, areas want to have someone trained in that, you would, you would do that? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And the second thing related to that is if they have someone, but no one in that area is trained, um, you, you said you go to the southern part of the state, or do you have them come to you? I've had them come to me to do okay. it. And, okay. uh, yeah, they come here to do it. Okay. Uh, sometimes I've tried to work it in with, with when I'm doing training for the full freedom from smoking in other parts of the state, or I'm there doing um, uh, training for cancer support now. If I happen to be in the neighborhood, I've offered it. And so far, I've had, while I'm there, I've had nobody take me up on it, you know, so the timing hasn't been right for them. It's just as simple as that. Um, that training does take about five hours. Um, and uh, we Where are you located? Uh, I'm located in Albuquerque. Oh, okay. And we usually set this up uh, at the American Lung Association to provide that training. They're very generous okay. about offering their location for that. We collaborate and partner with them. I have a quick question. So you had mentioned for for teens, um, the state will not provide patches or gum nicotine replacement. or nicotine replacement. Are there any? Um, is there any literature or sources that could be a guide if you think you have a teen who might benefit from? you know, let's say they're smoking a lot of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, is there any sort of, of resources as far as t to help a, a practitioner decide if that's appropriate and what sort of dosing would be appropriate? You know, I almost all the, mater the material I have on that is aimed specifically at adults. Mm -hmm. So I really can't, I'm sorry, Dr. Kathy, that's I okay. cannot answer that question because I don't know, I mm -hmm. frankly don't know that there's anything. Mm -hmm. But it certainly is something that would be good to research and find yeah, out if it's I'll, available. We'll have to look and and see is, um, something. American Lung Association has a um, helpline. Yes, they do. The Lung Helpline. And I could get you that number. And they are staffed by respiratory therapists and nurses that answer these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And they might be able to... I had not known about the, the NOT program, and I think that is wonderful to know about because I've had a, a couple of, a few teens come through clinic, and we've kind of gone round and round where they said, well, I called the 1-800 number, but they won't provide me any resources, and at least knowing now that there's a program 
not that they, but they wouldn't provide the, the patches or the gum, and so that's kind of where it ended. They didn't want to pursue it any further. But now at least I can say, hey, there's this program for teens. They won't necessarily provide you nicotine, but it, they'll help you figure out how to approach things, and it's your peers and not, you're not going through it alone, which I think for teens is very helpful. Yes. I think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's a great program, and it's improved even since I've, I've done it. It's is it provided in other parts of the state, do you know? Yes, uh, Joanna has trained a lot of wonderful. people to do not. So again, poor Joanna, she's going yeah, to back on vacation, <laughs> and she's going to have all these calls. But yes, she could she could let let people know where this training has been provided uh, for people or who have who's received the training, and she's the trainer for that. She's the primary trainer for it, and she's done a lot of it here in Albuquerque mm -hmm. with with uh, in the schools in the school system. That was my next question. I was going to ask you if it, if it's maybe offered at some of the school based health clinics or in the schools. Yes. So it's easy for for them to get to, the kids to get to. Yes. Awesome. Does anybody um, have any any other questions? Okay, and um, just in case you um, happen to sign on after we got started, if you wouldn't mind um, shouting out and introducing yourself so we make sure that we know you're there. Hi, this is Carrie Hopes in Roswell. Hi. Michael Anybody? Lance, ABQ Health Partners. Hi, Michael. Hi, everybody. Dr. Waymeyer, ABQ Health Partners. Hey, Gina, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hey, Good. I thought I was presenting today. Is there time for that or no, for an asthma? Um... Uh, we we could do it. I don't have any of the. I didn't of the get any group of, there. Of the no, paperwork. The, we we're just wondering about the Form. documentation. Unless you can send it real quick, I guess. Well, when can we? When do you have another presentation time? Um, October ninth is our next session. Okay, let me look. I'll, let me do it then. That way, I can get it okay. together. That's that's great. We can definitely do Alrighty. it. Alrighty. I'd just like to say thank you for having me. Um, I really enjoyed it. This is the first time I've done this room is just incredible. I used to do media stuff a lot a long time ago in a past life, and uh, what a wonderful setup this is. How fortunate you are to have this. <laughs> thank you for being thank here. Thank you for well, sharing your resources. Yes, thank you. And um, so next time, um, October 9th, we're going to do a, a journal club and uh, talk a little bit about. Um, recent literature or recent studies that are kind of in process so you kind of know what to look for um, in the future. So thank you all for attending today and thank you very much Patricia. It was very interesting. Thanks.